I think I noticed that I was playing better than just your average player when I started playing in regionals and playing against players that I already knew were pros. I am an eighth grade teacher, so I always equate uh, my learning as well as teaching in the same the same way. So uh, the way I teach other people how to play the game is how I learned, and I want to I want to see your most natural throw, and I would just try a natural throw and stance, um, and I would record myself to see how what I look like, what my backswing look like, my footing, my follow through grip, etc., and and you know, make tweaks to it. Because it's, mu it's much easier to make adjustments to your more natural throw than it is to change a throw or a grip altogether. I have a lot of weight on my back leg and, and I usually have a toe up. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. Um, and I usually rock forward because I want to get positive body motion already before I even worry about my arm. Um, it's balance, balance here, rocking forward, and then a follow through. And before I played cornhole, I played uh, competitive darts. And darts is the same thing. All I did differently was add an arm pendulum. And actually recently I've been adjusting how I keep my, my arm and my elbow completely straight. Keeping my arm straight and keeping it like this to follow through has helped me in times that if I get nervous in a game or you know sometimes you're out of rhythm and you're, and you're relying on muscle memory. Um, if I tell myself to keep my arm straight on my backswing, um, I find that I can get out of those situations. Most people probably don't know this, but I have a pretty unorthodox uh, grip. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people have the seam of the bag out. I've I've always put the seam of the bag into my hand, and so I got half of my hand like that, and that's a pretty normal normal grip but I have a, a really interesting habit um, I'll have it in my hand and right as I'm going my backswing I re-grip and it's probably a bad habit but it's something I've done forever I've tried to change change that and it's something that's I've, I've always had ingrained I'll, I'll have it in my hand and then I and then that, right as I'm doing it you'll see me grab it and I grab it during my backswing I, I reset it it's kind of a weird thing I do it's in my hand, and then the last second I go like that. And what ends up happening is you get a butterfly grip, which is the most common grip. So the great thing about cornhole is I've really adapted a lot of different sports I've played with how I throw cornhole bags. We've talked about how the right foot forward with um, throwing darts, I used to play darts. But um, also I used to play a lot of ultimate frisbee. And uh, in frisbee, an underhand whip, throwing it like this to, to whip a frisbee real fast is very, very close to how you throw a very flat bag in cornhole. Rocking the pendulum of the arm, and then at the last second, flipping the wrist to the fingers pointing at the hole is, is, is the way that you get the rotation in the bag. Um, in high wind situations, you want a, a more aggressive whip of that wrist to get more spin to cut through uh, windy conditions. Um, some players that you see have a a, a high rotation bag and some uh, less ro rotating bag. And that's just a, about preference or their style of play. I think mine's just a, a pretty normal average spin. So to teach new players or students in my classroom how to throw a flat bag, um, I teach them to stand a lot closer to the board. I really want them just to stand and practice the flatness of the bag. Flatness the flat and the rotation. And you wanna get them to learn the form, and then as you go, as they learn how to do that, you increase the distance to, for the power because the power will come after you get the form. I think to find success in, in playing cornel, you have to have, there's two sides of it. You have to have a consistent, repetitive throw physically, but then I think mentally you have to have you have to be mentally tough um, and mentally focused. Uh, whether you're down, you know, you can be down 15-0, you gotta be able to say that I can still come back and have that toughness um, and not give up. Um, I think the focus is something that's hard for me. I have, I have ADHD, I've had, and I've battled that for a long time, uh, growing up and going through school. And so 
noises around the room. In a Cornhole tournament, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of things going on, people walking around. Really getting dialed in and just focusing on the hole and nothing else. And, and if I can get that locked in earlier uh, in, in a tournament, I have more success. You need to be willing to play often enough against people that are better than you, that you can develop your craft and your game. Uh, you can learn shots, you can learn strategies from other people, but um, you can't put the same situations practicing in your backyard by yourself. Now, it's good for muscle memory. You know, game situations, that's where you learn and how to, how to play the game. It's how you learn how to throw certain shots. Um, you learn about other players that are good around you and how to play them. And I think that's, that's how you'll be successful in, in professional cornhole, is finding the best person in the room and going to play and practice with them, play them. Thanks for joining us at Cornhole Network. I'll see you on the boards.